you, everybody, and welcome to the Arlington Select Board meeting for Monday, April 11, 2022. I am Select Board Chair Leonard Diggins. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mrs. Mahan. Can't hear you. Uh, sorry, here. I'm okay. unmuted now. Sorry. Okay. Here you now. Hey, you know, Mr. Hurd? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? Yes. And, and Mr. Of course, he will not be joining us tonight. Staff, so when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mr. Taptelane? Yes. Mr. Heim? Yes. And, and Select Board Administrator Ashley Meyer is participating, but not as a panelist. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act signing to law on February 15, 2022, that extends certain COVID 19 measures. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So without short agenda, I'm confident we'll get all the town's business done tonight. And I'll now turn to the next item on the agenda, which is item two, land acknowledgement. I would like to read the land acknowledgement that the board supported last spring and town meeting approved through a resolution which is also contained on the town's website. We acknowledge that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous people from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. I now turn to item three on tonight's agenda, and that is the consent agenda. So I will start with uh, Mr. Helmuth for a motion and or comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I move approval. And uh, Mr. Hurd. Uh, second. Just for people watching, you might want to just read what's on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I appreciate that. So on the consent agenda, we have um, the minutes from from um, three meetings, uh, March 21st, um, March 28th, and April 4th. Okay, so, so now that we know, um, Mr. Hurd, you seconded, right? Thank you. Mrs. Mahan? No questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, no questions or comments from me. So we'll ask Mr. Heim to um, take roll call. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Diggins. Yes. The four zero vote. Okay. And next on the agenda, let me pull it up. So we have a uh, discussion and approval of the draft select board report to town meeting. And then with that, we turn to Mr. Heim. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, what's before you is a um, draft select, select board report, report that reflects the um, votes and comments that you've already entered. Um, we got into the practice of doing this just as providing one final opportunity for the board to review its votes and comments um, before they get submitted to the town meeting. This year, it's a little bit more straightforward because we don't have any change in uh, members of the board uh, for any reason, which we're all uh, happy about. Um, 
I do want to draw your attention to uh, one uh, vote that we received some feedback on and one vote and comment that wasn't finalized in previous versions. So if you'll uh, turn your attention to Article 16, bylaw amendment to noise bylaw regarding gas powered leaf blowers. Um, after your vote and your approval of the vote and comment, uh, Deputy Council Cunningham and I received a little bit of uh, feedback and input from the uh, resident petitioners who were hoping that something could be clarified that neither Mr. Cunningham or I thought, Attorney Cunningham and I thought was a substantive change. Um, if you if you allow it, Mr. Chairman, I'd like a, to give Mr. Cunningham an opportunity since he's here with us to explain what's highlighted in yellow. Um, you'll basically see two ver similar versions of the same paragraph um, under the changes to section 3D daytime only proposed in the vote. Uh, and I'll let Attorney Cunningham explain uh, what the sort of issue was as the resident petitioners saw it. Uh, we think it's consistent with your previous vote, but we wanna make sure. Obviously, if you wanna stay with the language that we had uh, originally approved, that's fine. Um, but it's something that they felt was clearer uh, with some uh, relatively modest modifications. So Mr. Thanks. Chair, I can turn it over to Deputy Town Council Cunningham. That'd be terrific. Yes, please do. Um, please, Mr. Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, to, as Attorney Heim outlined, we had a conversation with uh, the group, the proponents of this article. And in particular, if you look at sec Article 16, number two, I put uh, the proposed new text in yellow, which is directly below the original text that was last before this board. Essentially, the change amounts to uh, a difference between for commercial users, they would be allowed to use the gas powered leaf blowers during the transition phase from um, May 31st, as you can see there, instead of June 15th. And then there's also some clarification in the next in the next paragraph on the, on the following page that I think was just consistent with what the board approved previously but it's a little bit more clear, I think. In my view, I think the changes regarding the dates for commercial uses during the phase out period are not substantive changes and are consistent with the board's direction uh, to this office regarding what you wanted to see. So, but I would uh, defer to any questions or concerns about those changes. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that they changed what you voted on the last time I was here talking about this issue, but I'll leave that to the board to decide. Thank you, Mr. Honeycamp. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Um, anything else, Mr. Heim? Yes. So um, in addition to that, I just wanted to note that you'll see highlighted in your draft report um, the revolving funds. I just needed the updated numbers for the revolving funds. I will update those along with uh, the board office. They're highlighted just to show what it looks like in the select board vote, but I, I haven't yet received the updated table. So as soon as I get the updated table, I will make sure that the um, figures for um, the balance ending in 2021 is reflected. And then finally, um, Article 77, you may recall, was uh, the last part of a sort of trio of measures the board approved with respect to uh, rodenticides in Arlington. Um, I tried to take the proponents warrant articles and some of the materials they'd submitted to me previously and translate it into a resolution. It's fairly straightforward. It essentially um, urges the town to continue to develop uh, to its current work and to develop a, and implement um, an integrated pest management policy wherever possible for town-owned properties. As the board is aware, there are a bunch of different entities that own or manage town properties. Uh, while most of the town properties are managed by the town manager, um, this resolution is essentially encouraging all um, uh, Arlington municipal landowners, the school department, the town manager, uh, conservation, parks and rec to in use integrated pest management and not to use second generation anticoagulant rodenticides, which to my understanding, we are not uh, using or not using uh, uh, unless it's absolutely the last resort as of now anyway. So if the board would like to vote to approve um, what we've put in front of you, um, that would cover Article 77, depending on how the board feels about it, the changes that we talked about to Article 16. And you should just know that um, we'll include um, some of the appendix materials that are 
referenced and update those um, revolving fund tables. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. And so do you recommend that we vote once, mean on the whole report, or do that we vote three times based on the changes that you've made? I would say once in the, well, the board can make whatever motion it wants, but, but I would say that voting once is, is, is sufficient for our purposes. And obviously if there's any other tweaks or changes that members of the board uh, would like to see made to the report, that's part of why we provided it too, to make sure that it reflects accurately to all the votes and comments that we previously submitted to you. Yeah, Thank I you. appreciate that. Thank you. I just figured I'd help out Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hurd, to whom I'm gonna turn now hey, for a hey, motion and or comments. Mr. Hurd? So just looking at this leap below language, and I just, again, I mean, I think we went through this last time and the language that's, so now I'm reading this language that says during the transition period, May 31st to of 2022, commercial users cannot use gas power leaf blowers during certain portions of the year. Is that what it's saying now? Because we, we'd gone through this the last meeting and my understanding was until during the transition period, there's really no change in when they can use the gas power leaf blowers. Is that is that what the language is still saying? Mr. Chair, may I respond? Or yes, please. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Hurd, I believe it's there's a prohibition period um, with the restrictions that are outlined in Section A. So during the phase out, they would be permitted to use the gas powered uh, leaf blowers, but subject to the restrictions that are listed in the, in Section Two A. I think the big change that the proponents were asking us to to make, which I don't think is a huge change, but was regarding the um, the prohibition from May 31st to June 15th, that that date change was the, that's really the crux of what we changed there. So during the, so say in 2022, once this gets enacted, after June 15th, they cannot use the leaf blowers? Like in July, they can't use the leaf blowers? Uh, Mr. Cunningham? Correct. So this is, I mean, that's the part of the discussion that we had in the last meeting. And I was assured that that until 2025, that there were no restrictions on the months. I just, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have to change my vote on this one because I think that's too quick to, as of June 15th, they have to figure out how to rework their businesses for the summer months. My understanding based on the discussion that we had at our last meeting was that until during the phase out period that they could use the leaf blowers at any point. There weren't any blackout months. And I thought that's what was confirmed. And this seems to be pretty dramatically different than my understanding. So, I mean, I'll listen to what my colleagues have to say, but I, I'm just saying that the, the language that I see here is pretty dramatically different than what I was understanding it from before. And maybe I was just misunderstanding, but that was the point of what I was trying to get at at the last meeting when we discussed this was that it, it, I thought at the time was represented that there were no blackout months for the use of these. And that's what, what my original concern was that it, with the language that was originally proposed by the proponents, it was, you know, we're months away from landscapers having to to readjust how they do their work. And I mean, I just, I don't agree with, with, the, with the idea that they don't use them in the summer or they don't need them in the summer. They only use them during spring and fall cleanups. So this is, I'm just saying that this is pretty dramatically different from what I had understood this at just at our last meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Ms. Mohan? <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you can hear me, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, it doesn't say on my phone if I'm muted or, or not. Um, I, I agree with Mr. Hurd. It, it was my understanding at the last meeting, um, it was talking about transition and dates and commercial use, and it was 2023. Then um, it was agreed that it would run parallel to the Lexington proposal, which is 2025. And that, as Mr. Hurd stated, um, that that would give enough time for 
commercial landscapers or any commercial business that's using them um, time to transition. So uh, if I could, through you, Mr. Chair, ask Attorney Cunningham, if we choose not to adopt the proposed language, which means it defaults back to what is before us, am I correct that that's what the case would be? The date of 2023 gets changed to 2025 and commercial landscapers have until then? Mr. Cunningham? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Ms. Mahan. Um, I think that uh, the original, my understanding of what the original discussion was from the proponents and what was before this board previously was that the dates of prohibition were, in, were designed to allow commercial users and residents, but commercial users on one, one less year, to use gas-powered leaf blowers during spring and fall cleanup. Um, so that's what the, the May 31st date versus June 15th. Originally, what I understood before the board, what the board voted on originally, was that they were going to prohibit the use of gas-powered leaf blowers essentially during the summer season when commercial users and most people don't use them anyway. Uh, but that they would allow for during the transition phase for commercial users to use them up through June 15th was what we originally talked about. And then the proponents were the ones who reached out and, and asked to, they, th they felt it was within the spirit of what the board voted to move that back to May 31st. So a commercial user, for instance, right now could continue to use a gas powered leaf blower up through May 31st to do their spring cleanup. And then again, after September 15th to conduct their fall cleanup. But if you, if the board thinks that's, if I didn't properly explain that, I apologize last time, or if that was unclear, then that's my fault. Um, we'll we'll deal with deal with that as as, as the board sees fit. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. Mrs. Han. Please, please. Um, I saw Mr. Himes' hand up, but I will. Oh, go no, back I'll to wait. You. You may... No, I'll go to Attorney Himes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Himes. I just wanted to um, to make clear that when we, if you look at the, there's two paragraph twos. So you can see what the original language, uh, an amendment proposed to the board would look like. The use of gas power leaf blowers prohibited between June 15th and September 15th, except in accordance with the transition and phase out schedule as set forth below. And then the phase out schedule is set forth below which basically talks about commercial and municipal users transition period. And it highlights that during the transition period from May 31st, uh, 2022 through March 15th of 2025, gas powered leaf overs may be operated by commercial landscape companies and the town during the following times. So that was what we originally proposed to you. The major thing that was sort of changed is there was a little bit more um, detail put in basically a single bullet point. So um, just so you can compare and contrast the revised language with the original proposed amendment. So I, I just want to be clear that those two things are there for you to compare if it's useful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haim. Um, Ms. Mahan? Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess with that understanding, I would my preference would be to not adopt the amendment by the proponents, which further limits the time out timeline posed in the bylaw um, from June back to May. I'd like to stick with the original language and I'd be interested to hear from all my colleagues, um, including Mr. Hurd. Um, and I'd like to just state on the record what I'm hearing is um that commercial landscapers have until 2025 um to ultimately uh be in conformance with the bylaw but that the original language and i'm just doing this from memory because i can't i, I tried to print and i couldn't um basically the difference between um the language and time of hours is that for homeowner residents there are some Sunday hours and we are a little more gracious with residents um, by perhaps about two hours um, versus commercial um, landscapers. So I guess where I am right now is I'd like to stick with the original language with the understanding that um, 
the landscapers have until 2025 for the penultimate date for the transition. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Behan. Um, so, uh, Mr. Mr. Helmuth. Yeah, thank you. Um, through, uh, Mr. Chair, through you, I'd like to ask if um, any of my colleagues or um, either of our uh, legal counsel are aware of the Lexington bylaw, which was not only passed, but affirmed by, by the you know, uh, public in referendum. Um, did it also contain an immediate uh, prohibition of gas powered leaf blowers uh, during the summer months outside of the cleanup season? Um, so, uh, will one of our attorneys raise their hands for this one? Uh, Mr. Cunningham, thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, I don't have it in front of me, um, Mr. Helmuth, but I, 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 I believe it did. I think because it's, this is substantially similar to the language contained in the Lexington bylaw that was passed last fall and approved by their voters this spring. Thank you. Yeah, that's my recollection as well. Um, and I thought yeah, that was my understanding of kind of what we were we were doing. Um, I think the ambiguity is just in um, stating the prohibition and then saying that there are exceptions. And I think maybe there's just some understandable uh, confusion. It's good that we're having this discussion now, obviously, so that we know our own minds. Um, that um, you know that it, that there is a there's a phase out period but in the transition period, but the transition period is really, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, from from uh, you know being able to use gas fire leaf blowers, but but only outside this the cleanup time, which is you know I think the intent of that was was when they're really most needed and used um, and that they would need to use, if they use blowers at all in the summer months, that they would need to use the, use electric ones. Is that is that kind of currently, whether or not we, we go with the, the, the amended language, um, the amended date, I should say, um, that's that's kind of what was originally before us in the last couple of versions of this we saw, or the last version, I saw only just one version. Excuse me, was that a question? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I guess just kind of confirming my understanding that that's, that's correct, that, that the change in the date being proposed now and the, and the highlight doesn't really change the substance of this, um, Mr. Cunningham, is that, that, that our, it may ask us a better way, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I mean, I used to be back in Zoom already, um, is the other highlight that we have on the, on the date change, is that adding a prohibition of gas pile or leaf blowers during the summer months, or was that already there? And what's the question is, is the date? So, uh, uh, so I think that was addressed to Mr. Cunningham. In it was, the through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Chair, may I? Yes. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Helmet. That essentially sets back the clock two weeks, um, which I think the, the original language that the board saw did prohibit the use of gas powered leaf blowers during the summer months, but just had the summer starting on June 15th instead of May 31st. Okay, you think that, that's helpful. That was much better than I tried to formulate it earlier on. Um, yeah, so I think that was my understanding as well. I think you know we may need to have a discussion about whether we're all of us are still there or not. Um, I'm still, I think, basically comfortable with that just, just because in the summer months, the, the need for 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 these devices is not as, as severe. And I think also, you know, my interest in this was making this as parallel with what is going to, what will be in effect in Lexington um, imminently upon AG review, because I think that has an industry-wide effect, you know, many, not all, but there's certainly overlap in the contractors. Um, and also know that the town of Arlington itself is, is requiring um, use of electric equipment anyway. So I, I guess I'm somewhat less concerned um, because of all that, but certainly respectful of my colleagues' um, further views. Uh, and Mr. Chair, I think right now we're discussing the leaf blowers. I just wanted to, um, if we're going to do this kind of all in one vote, and that, that may change. I had one small addition to another article, just one to kind of bookmark. I can either do that one now or, or kind of hold off if we want to kind of keep talking about this one. Yes, if we could hold off, Mr. Uh, Mr. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I'd appreciate that. I saw Mr. Right. Himes. And go up. Right. Do you still want to say something this time? Yes, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to clarify, and again, um, I think th that this is a healthy thing. Obviously, um, the way that we had uh, envisioned the vote created some uh, competing interpretations of it. So that's part of, I think, why the proponents uh, wanted us to <clears throat> come back with a different language. And I think it's part of why uh, members of the board are, are expressing some uh, concern about what was voted on. But I, I do want to make it clear, and we don't, that Arlington certainly doesn't have to do what Lexington does at all. But what Lexington did has already been approved by the Attorney General's office, and it essentially restricts use of gas power leaf blowers from March 15th to May 31st, and again from uh, September 15th to December, 30, December 30th. And that is effective May 31st, 2022. So that is, that, the Lexington, I think, I think where there's a little bit of disconnect is that um, there may be some disconnect on whether or not Arlington was following the Lexington um, model or not. Um, so obviously this is up to the board and I apologize for um, having it be a little bit uh, ambiguous as to what was being captured by the first vote in common. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Yes. Um, th thank you, Mr. Arlington. That's very helpful. I think, did you mean to say uh, for Lexington, and I realize that you are town council for Arlington, not Lexington, so um, that their prohibition starts in March or in May for the, uh, at the, at the front of that season? Their prohibition starts, goes from March 15th mm. um, to May 31st and September 15th to December 30th, is my understanding. Um, and it's effective May 31st, which is a little, I, okay, I see. Right, so it means you. that it means that this summer it would not apply. That would also be true for any action Arlington has to take because obviously the attorney general's office won't render a decision okay. until mm. um, until uh, sometime okay. in September. So if the summer prohibition were to stand and a town meeting were to you know approve that, the it couldn't apply this summer anyway. So there would be at least be a year if for a company that wanted to use this during the summer period, you know, they would have at least a year to, to provide for that with equipment. Correct. Because of the cycle. I'm yeah. sorry, Mr. Chair, may I? Yes, yes, please. Correct. It would not apply um, until it was okay. approved by the Attorney General's office. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all my comments and questions on, on, the, on this article. Um, so if we can have a chance to return the other ones, that would be great. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, so back to you, Mr. Hurd. I mean, I, I guess I'll apologize for just not understanding the language. Um, I thought my question was clear at the last meeting, but apparently I wasn't. And so my question was, is that uh, was to confirm that there was no blackout months until the 2025. And I must not have asked it correctly um, because it, we got an affirmative answer at that time. Um, so it is what it is. We, we already voted on it. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel over it. I think having this come, regardless of the, the attorney general's time frame, I think if town meeting passes this, it's going to be a nightmare for the Arlington Police Department who are going to get a lot of calls over the summer because which residents really know when the attorney general approves a bylaw amendment. I think a lot of residents are going to be calling on contractors because they know that it was passed at town meeting. So it's my fault for not understanding. I'll take the heat for that and move on, I guess. Um, I just I mean, just for the sake of thoroughness, I mean, I want to circle back to Mrs. Mahan. I mean, uh, all you, you haven't raised your hand. Do you want to add any more? Um, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just that I think ultimately when we get to town meeting, um, I'm guessing there's going to be a few um, substitute motions that speak to different parts of this. So, um, so I, I agree with Mr. Hurd's comments, um, but also agree with my colleague's sentiments to um, get this before town meeting and and have the very active and lively discussion and debate that we'll have and see what we end up with in the end. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. And um, so um, in continuing our discussion about um, the draft um, final um, report, Mr. Hurd, I'm sorry, Ms. Hubbard, the, uh, you are at desk. <laughs> this is, I got off to a bad start being in the last meeting and I think this might 
persist, you know. So I uh, like, I consider that an honor and an upgrade personally, referred to as Mr. Hurd, <laughs> one of our more thoughtful and collegial members. Um, I, I just want to say on the last item, um, you know, I think I think the confusion is just baked right in. It's not our, our, our attorney's fault at all. I think that the complicated way of approaching this um, engenders that confusion. And I, you know, so um, I, I agree with with Mrs. Mahan. Ultimately, this is for Tom Bean to sort out. And, you know, I'm also comfortable. I mean, I, I, I want my colleagues to feel like they know what they're voting on and everything. But I think if we we have consensus to get this done, um, and let town meeting sort it out. And I, I agree that there, there's probably going to be some suggestions for some, some changes and tweaks to this, um, you know, like, like let the action move there. Um, I had a couple of, these are really small things, but on the, um, on the resolution for the IPM strategy, uh, and thank you very much to our, to our attorneys for, um, for writing that up and all the other work, they had a lot of writing to do this year, much more than usual, and they did a fine job. Um, this, because IPM, Integrated Pest Management, is not really the same as organic um, pest control or, or, or uh, farming, which is something I know more of uh, myself, I might suggest striking the word organic, and I might further suggest striking the word natural, simply because it doesn't have any legal meaning as far as I'm concerned in, in, um, in agriculture and um, in, in these practices, and that because IPM you know, has has a defined meaning by by standards in industry. I think that might stand on its own just fine to just to just go with that. Um, and the other thing, and that's just a suggestion, is back on um, Article 19 on uh, the um, proposal for Maliazzi Boulevard. Um, and I cleared this with Mr. Hurd uh, privately. Um, I'd like to request um, the addition of the minority viewpoint on the on the vote, um, just as follows after the majority's position is explained, saying the minority believes that the novel nature of this proposal warrants a variance from, back, from past practice. Um, so I'd like to suggest that if my colleagues are comfortable with that. So, um, so then I will um, see what was the rotation here. I'll go to Mr. Hurd, you know, see how you feel about uh, Mr. Helmets. Well, you he he consulted. I, with you. I guess I'm you're all, fine with it. <laughs> Take my word for it. Everything. I'm all good with everything Mr. Helmuth said. Okay, all right. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Mahan. Sorry, I must have bad reception. I have to keep hitting star six fifty times. Um, I guess I'll agree with both of my colleagues heard, heard, I mean, Helmut, um, and, uh, uh, fine with that. And, um, uh, I guess on, um, article 16, the leaf blower or an article, um, my, if I made a motion, well, I'd like to make a motion and then have my colleagues discuss it, <clears throat> excuse me, move approval. Um, subject to the amendments by um, our counsel, Mr. Helmuth, colleague, Mr. Helmuth, now I'm making him an attorney, there we go, um, as well as um, an Article 16, just because it seems like every time you change it, there's more confusion. I'd like to stick with the um, original language that we um, discussed, um, again, recognizing it'll probably be again change the town meeting. So I'd like to move approval of the 2022 select board report to town meeting as amended by attorney Heim and Cunningham with the exception of article 16. I'm not adopting that language right now, but to keep it the way it was that we discussed last week, um, as well as the amendment by uh, Mr. Helmuth and or um, I would be open to if, um, our chair or anyone else has some changes, but I'd like to put that motion on the table, um, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, any um, comments, Mr. Um, Mr. Helmuth? Sounds good to me. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, um, you know, the great part about this one is that my colleagues have pretty much said everything, you know, and so I've taken it all in. I really have um, 
nothing to add to the discussion. And I see where everyone is coming from in, um, with um, the discussion on the leaf rollers and, and with the recommended amendment to the resolution regarding um, striking organic, meaning natural, and, and, um, and I'm blanking out on the last one, you know, Mr. Helmets, oh, what was that? Oh, that, that was uh, adding the minority uh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. on the article 19. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely, we definitely in favor of that. You know, so, so, um, so with um, the motion by um, Mrs. Mahan and, and the second by Mr. Hurd, um, Mr. Heim, can you take the um, roll call? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to members of the board for your patience and understanding as we try to cultivate these votes together. Um, Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Ms. Mr. Diggins? Yes. So, it's a 4 0 vote. Thank you. Thank you. Ian, and I will move on to the next item on the agenda, item number five, which is the discussion and pension vote uh, authorization of virtual town meeting. Uh, we will hear from uh, town moderator, Mr. Christiana. Hi, Mr. Chair and Select Board. Uh, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, uh, Greg Christiana, town moderator. Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak with the Select Board tonight in my capacity as town moderator. I'd like to summarize how I arrived at my decision to request a remote meeting. Uh, and then happy to take any questions uh, that you might have. Uh, last week, I consulted with the town manager, town council, and the director of health and human services and, and others about our options for how to convene town meeting this year. Uh, some options that we discussed included town hall, uh, other large indoor venues like one of the gyms at the Arlington High School, uh, the Arlington High School football field, uh, and remote participation using the virtual town meeting platform that we've used twice during the pandemic. Uh, town council can speak to the legal criterion for me as moderator to make a request to the select board for town meeting to be held remotely. But to summarize, I would have to determine that it's not possible to safely assemble in person for town meeting. And that's my determination based on the conversations that I had last week based on increasing COVID cases locally and leading indicators that are trending in the wrong direction, uh, lack of indoor spaces large enough to allow sufficient distancing, and poor ventilation at town hall, which is difficult to remedy. I've asked Ms. Bongiorno, the Director of Health and Human Services, to attend tonight to weigh in on the input that she gave me in our meetings last week so that you can hear her insights unfiltered. I ask that you approve my request so that we can continue planning for virtual town meeting to provide a safe venue for all participants in this very fluid and unpredictable situation. I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ms. Moderator. So are you saying that you would like for us to hear from Ms. Wendrono now, or just if we have questions? Uh, th that's up to you. Um, All right. Well, uh, I would say if we have questions, then, then we will bring her in. I mean, uh, if um, she wants to speak, I mean, maybe she can signal that in the chat and, and um, the um, town manager can let us know uh, that's the case. I mean, we'll be happy to bring her in. And so I will start um, with Mrs. Mahan. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I could, I would like to ask the Health and Human Services Director um, to provide an explanation um, of what she also explained to our town moderator and that, am I correct, that while we considered alternate sites such as the gymnasiums at the high school, that's really not um, available to us for um, the special and regular town meeting. And then my second question would be through the chair, either um, through the chair, through the chair, either to the town moderator and or town council, just because I've gotten some questions on it. Um, there has been discussion that should the board vote with the moderator, which I am going to do for um, the 2022 regular and special town meeting, if there is one, to be conducted remotely, um, there has been discussion that 
the first night of town meeting, that town meeting members would need to take a vote um, whether to um, comport with that, agree with that, and um, if they choose not to, then um, how do we proceed from there? So I'd like to hear from um, Ms. Van Journal. I'd like everybody else to ruminate on my question. A, is that something that town meeting members will take up as the first order of business? If so, um, if there is a vote not to do this remotely, um, how we proceed from there, is there a default that even if there is a vote to come back to town hall, since it's not safe to do that, um, does that mean the default is we still have to be remote anyway? So I guess maybe if, um, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chair, to hear from Ms. Bongiorno and then whomever you wanna direct that second part of the question to, and I apologize if it's confusing. So, cause I'm a little confused and I'd like to get clarity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan, Ms. Ms. Bongiorno. Sure, thank you. Um, so I met with um, the new town, town moderator, the town manager and town council last week um, to inform them that the cases that we're seeing here in town, both the documented cases um, that we're seeing, the lab reported cases through the state, as well as um, the uh, sewage data that we review uh, daily uh, shows that there's an increase in cases um, in this region. So we are seeing an increase in COVID. Um, so I think you know, that's the information I did provide to the town moderator um, to help inform his decision on whether or not to move forward with the um, in-person versus remote uh, town meeting. So I, that's really all I wanted to, I don't know if Adam wanted to expand on that. Okay. So um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Chaplin, did I see your hand go up? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to be responsive to the other part of uh, Mrs. Mahan's question about the Red Gym. And we did inquire about both the gym and what would be the new auditorium. The new auditorium's audiovisual equipment won't be ready in time for town meeting. And the Red Gym, unfortunately, has a series of volleyball games that conflicted with town meeting dates. The athletic director and the superintendent were willing to think about rescheduling one game or two, but rescheduling a whole series of games um, was too, you know, too far a bridge to cross to be able to access the Red Gym. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And um, so, Mr. Heim, did you want to refer to the um, question regarding what happens I mean, if town meeting members do not want to vote not to do VTM? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's a good question, an important question. So, um, in the so uh, if the board were to agree with the moderator that town meeting should be conducted virtually or remotely, the first order of business that would happen, uh, and by the way, there are other procedural requirements. The board would issue a notice. There are certain things that the town clerk would do. Um, we have to make sure that it's uh, people within uh, members of the public who are not town meeting members who want to watch town meeting. They send a, a note to the moderator 48 hours before town meeting begins. We have to be able to make sure we give them access to follow along. We always make sure that it's broadcast on the ACMI, all that kind of stuff. But the first order of business at the town meeting will be to uh, take a vote of those members present about whether or not they will essentially agree to conduct town meeting virtually. If they do agree, then the meeting proceeds. If they don't agree, there are really two options. One option is to reconvene town meeting in a physical location. Uh, which is to say that because the warrant was initially noticed and we did this with intent to make sure that town meeting had maximum flexibility, uh, because the uh, warrant does provide a location, the town meeting could vote to essentially uh, begin its deliberations at uh, town hall, despite the risks that have been stated by the moderator and uh, presumably the select board if we're getting to this point. The other option is essentially to dissolve town meeting and to post town meeting at a new location. Uh, the most likely scenario in that event, if it doesn't seem safe to uh, uh, proceed with town meeting, would be a version of town meeting that's somewhat similar to what we did in 2020, which is essentially a town meeting that's uh, highly compact and condensed on the football field and takes care of the essential business that needs to be concluded before June 30th. So, those are the two options. Uh, one would be to sort of forge ahead despite uh, the assessment of risk being apprised to town meeting members. 
And the other uh, option would essentially be to dissolve the town meeting and re-notice it um, for a, some location like the football field for what would probably have to be a uh, highly truncated version of town meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. And um, so, um, Ms. Mohan, are you satisfied? Um, do you? Um, yeah, yes, I am. And I'd like to make a motion to move approval of uh, the request of um, the town moderator to conduct the regular and special 2022 town meeting uh, through VTM virtually. Thank you, Ms. Mohan. And um, Mr. Ms. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, oh, boy, here, now it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that was deserved, if unintentional. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Congratulations, Mr. Moderator, on your election, and uh, welcome to the big chair. This is uh, this is where where it gets uh, it gets real. Uh, I'd like to second the motion from a colleague, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, this is a hard decision. I don't think it's a decision anyone takes any pleasure in making. I like town meeting in person a lot. Um. And I think that the reason I support this is just from the information that our uh, Health and Human Services Chair just provided, and that is in the moderator, uh, that the, the trends are, are going up. And, you know, I think that just, you don't have to be a scientist to, to just notice and observe that when, when the wastewater data, when the seven day weighted average of, of positivity rises and the case reports rise and all those things are happening right now, that those have preceded surges. And we know from other parts of the world and now other parts, you know, cities, Philadelphia just reinstated its mask mandate that it seems to me, it's a guessing game. None of us know for sure what will happen, including the experts, but that it seems likely in two or three weeks, it's gonna be more clear that this was a good call. You know, we don't know. We could find in two or three weeks that things are about the same. And then, you know, I think our problem is that we have to make a decision now because there's preparations to make it. It's gonna be tight as it is. So we don't have the luxury of waiting to find out. Um, and my concern is participation. Um, I think even though we're very fortunate that we have more treatments for COVID and that um, many infections are not serious, that st people still have to quarantine. So if we have you know, a number of town meeting members, even, even a modest number who have to, who can't attend in person because they're quarantining, even if they're not in any serious danger, I have concerns about that just from a democratic participation point of view. When, when we have the option, when the state the legislature has provided us the option to meet remotely um, while we can. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say my, my agreement is reluctant. I think only with regard to the circumstances. I want to make it clear that I don't, I don't love this idea. I don't think, I'm not sure anybody on the screen does. Um, so, um, so that's just kind of my thinking. And, um, you know, I just urge all, if Tommy members will absolutely have the voice, there's a legal reason why they need to make this decision. Um, but whatever the decision they do, you know, I hope that we can unite around our moderator and each other and, you know, get through this, hopefully for the last time um, as best we can. And, get it back to a more even keel if the pandemic recedes once again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Helmus. Uh, Mr. Heim, I saw your hand go up. I don't want to interrupt members of the board first. I just wanted to note that there were, if, if uh, the board was uh, warm to it, uh, there was a second piece that I was hoping I could uh, recommend uh, respectfully that we add on to uh, the, the motion uh, regarding a notice to be issued by the board. Okay. All right, I understand. You know, so it seems kind of, well, it seems like it's, it's just uh, a detail that doesn't really affect me the the tenor of the conversation. So, so we'll we'll come back to that. Uh, so, um, Mr. Mr. Hurt. Wow. So, I won't talk too long, I guess, because I can see where the board's voting. But, I mean, I'm just I'm hard no on voting to approve the remote town meeting i think in the past couple of years it's just been a nightmare um I, I think a lot of people have left town meeting because of the experience they've had i think it takes longer and i mean i i'm never gonna gonna be the one that tell tells someone not to to if they are have a fear of the virus not to tell them that they're wrong or kind of push them in somewhere that they're not comfortable with. 
I think we're two years into this. I think, you know, at the beginning, we always said follow the science. And when we see an uptick, unless I'm misreading these figures that I'm getting online, the uptick is about just under 2% of positivity rate to now it's 3% of positivity rate. So 3% of people tested are testing positive. There's 240 hospitalizations, which right now, which I calculated to be 0 0.000036 of the population. I mean, I, I just think around us, people are getting back to life. I've been to Bruins games. I've been to high school hockey games. The kids, there was similar arguments when we we're taking the, the mask off the kids and I haven't seen any, as far as I know from my kids' school and people that I know that there hasn't been any up, outbreaks. I th for me, I would just much prefer the human interaction of being in person with somebody. And I think we can, figure out a way to make people comfortable. People can, it can be areas of town meeting where people are comfortable that they can sit closer to each other than there's seats for people that have more fear or more hesitation about being in a public place near each other. People can wear masks if they want to. So, I mean, for me, I just, the idea of enduring another full town meeting through the virtual platform is, just too overwhelming for me to to vote to, to support it. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And, uh, so, um, Mr. Um, Heim, I think now it's time to entertain that um, detail modification amendment to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Diggins. It's not a, a, an amendment. It's as much as a um, if the board is inclined to um, move towards uh, 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 authorizing a remote meeting that the board would also approve that its office in consultation with the legal department would issue a notice regarding the change of venue from uh, in-person to a virtual town meeting consistent with chapter 22, uh, the acts of 2022. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. So, so then it doesn't affect the motion. And I'm, I'm, I'm not. So this is just a point of knowledge, point of information. I'm, I'm just asking that the, the board, uh, if the board approves, that it also uh, authorize and direct your office okay. to send a notice uh, to all town meeting members um, that basically it's attested to by the clerk and okay. includes right. the moderator's letter. Thank you, sir. Okay. Gotcha. I understand. Thank you. Thanks for the repetition of it. You know, it, it, I um well, I guess since Mr. Mr. Helmet said I mean, um, everyone here I mean um, um, would prefer in person. I feel that I need to come out and say, not me, you know. So because if I let that sit, I mean, then people go, yeah, I mean, when we also wanted it to um, uh, be uh, in person because that's his preference. I mean, uh, I, mean I I can make arguments for why. You know, um, I think BTM I mean, is better. I mean, one of them I mean, is the fact that we have more attendance, regardless of how people feel about it. At least they're there and they're voting. You know, twenty percent more. You know, uh, but um, and I hesitate to to um, talk about the science. You know, um, but it's not really clear that we are getting good numbers on the the infection rate, you know, uh, uh, and so, so um, it, I'm a little hesitant to say that things I mean, aren't worse than they look from from the numbers, you know. Uh, but, but um, it, as Mr. Helmet said, though, I mean, if people test positive, you know, then they're out. I mean, they're not going to be allowed in the meeting, you know. And, and if the meeting is only in person, you know, then they're out of town meeting. And, and, and given that we do have an alternative, I mean, that will allow them to participate I mean, fully in the process. And um, that'll be the reason that I'll vote for it, you know, regards to how I feel personally about town meeting, because 
I will defer I me mean, to the way the majority wants to, to meet, as I will on this board too meet up. And so, so I'm not going to um, dictate I mean, how we meet. Um, it's really going to be the matter how most of us want to meet. And, and, but if there's a safety issue involved, as I've said repeatedly, I'm going to be conservative about that. So, um, so um, that's it for me. And I see um, Mr. Christiana's hand back up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that, I mean, th there, there are plenty of reasons for preferring in person, uh, plenty of reasons for preferring remote, like for instance, like convenience, like, 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 uh, like you mentioned. Uh, I just wanted to be clear that my decision was based on satisfying the legal criteria and answering that question as far as being able to safely assemble. Uh, but but there, there are, there's, there, there's, there's plenty of other reasons to prefer one format versus the other, but that, that did not uh, really factor into my decision here. Thank you for making that clear. I mean, I appreciate that. You know, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I want to offer my apology for apology for my rhetorical excess. It is dangerous to say nobody in this room sees this differently because, of course, people do. And I should have realized that. And I did not mean to try to box you in, Mr. Chair. Uh, I respect your points of view and your preferences. And, and in fact, something I want to say is, um, you know, I, I was an early. Uh, Aider and a better to virtual town meeting, as, as most of you know, and I think the platform does work, and I think it is democratic, and I like the participation that we've seen. It is long and it's hard. Uh, somehow it's all going harder to sit in your own chair than it is for the same amount of time at town meeting. It just is. Some of us like the social connection, uh, but it's not bad, you know. And and I think that um, we've seen that town meeting members, even those for whom the technology is not native and comfortable have been able to participate and have a full voice. Um, so I, you know, I want the residents in town to understand. I don't think this is a second best thing. I mean, it's, it's not my personal preference. Um, and I think I hear that from some of my co colleagues that it's more enjoyable and a better experience for, for some people, for many people in person. I think that, that uh, the virtual town meeting environment as it's set up, we're, we're better at it now, we're practiced at it. Um, and I have confidence having started working kind of in a preliminary fashion with our moderator um, and understanding the system, you know, that, that he will guide us and lead us in a, in a way to, to, to have a good experience. And, you know, won't, it won't be as happy as experiences for many people want, including some of my colleagues. Um, but I think that we can get it done. And um, I just wanted to add those thoughts and add my appreciation for and to all of you for a good discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. I mean, it's so... And um, I think, oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Christiana, hand back up. Sorry, just, just very briefly. I just want to point out uh, to Mr. Heldman's point um, that uh, in discussions about planning for this year's uh, time meeting, because we've had to get started with the, uh, the planning for virtual already, because there wouldn't be time to wait for a decision tonight by the select board. So we're speculating they have been moving forward with planning. And uh, I've been uh, looking to make changes to some of uh, how we're conducting uh, a virtual town meeting to give a better feel than we might have gotten in past years based on kind of the experience that we've had with the last two virtual town meetings. For instance, uh, being able to have participants who are showing are able to show their videos if they if they choose to opt into that so we can actually see people as their speak participants like town meeting members as as they're speaking as opposed to just like the, you know a static image of them. Uh, so ho hopefully those sorts of efforts will help. Also optimizations in kind of tra uh, transitions between speakers and how things like the consent agenda are, are, are handled. So we, we, it has been pretty bumpy the last two times because it, we're doing it new. And so we have a lot of material to learn from. And I've been spending a lot of time studying how things have gone, kind of doing like my own sort of post-mortem on the last two virtual town meetings to try to learn from those so we can kind of smooth out a lot of rough edges, which hopefully help out with the experience. And I hope that's effective. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christiana. Um, Mr. Heim? I'm sorry to keep interrupting the, uh, oh, the board's fine. discourse. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to note, just for the public's uh, edification, it's in the moderator's letter. The proposal is to uh, have the uh, town meeting on a combination of the ZPATO platform. It's the same platform that we used last year uh, alongside um, essentially the Zoom um, software. So it would be identical to the way that previous, uh, I shouldn't say identical, it should be very similar to the way that previous uh, uh, virtual town meetings were conducted. 
it's just important to make that known for folks. It's in the moderator's letter. It'll be as part of the notice as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hahn. And so not seeing any desire for any more discussion, I on a motion means to uh, authorize a virtual town meeting uh, made by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Helmuth and Mr. Heim. Can you take a vote? Take the roll call. Mr. Hurd. No. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's a three one vote. Mr. DeCourcy was not present. Um, thank you, Mr. Heim. And, and once again, we, uh, uh, the select board's office will do as you suggested or, or you directed me in a few minutes ago. So uh, thank you, Ms. Christiana. Uh, and um, I think at this point, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is discussion of a potential date for virtual town day. No, just town day. <laughs> so, so, so Mr. Hurd? Yep, let me pull it up. I mean, this is really one of them. It's only two days that it can be. Right. So it's whatever the, the board prefers, but it is so we're in September. It'd be Saturday. Let me make sure I'm in the right spot here. All right. So you get it would either be the 17th or the 24th. My preference is the 17th, um, just because it's the third Saturday in in September, which I think is generally our our the when we schedule town day. So I put that to the board to have town day on September 17th, 2022. So um... hopefully this should be an easier discussion. <laughs> I think so. You know, uh, so so then you put that to the board as a motion. Um, I guess yeah. I'll move that we have our town day, annual town day on September seventeenth, twenty twenty two. Right. You know, Ms. Mahan. Um, can someone um, either the chair, Mr. Hurt, or someone else, just remind me when Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is? Um. Well, you know, Mr. Mahan, I don't know the dates, you know, exactly, but I do know that those dates, I mean, both dates are completely clear of that period because when we were having early discussions about this, I looked to see if there would be any conflict um, with either of those dates or, or, or the range between those dates, I mean, and, and there was no conflict between the, the 17th and the 24th. But I think in this time period, Mr. Chaplain has, has gotten the answer. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Rosh Hashanah begins on Monday, September 26th. And I'm not seeing, and Yom Kippur begins on Wednesday, October 5th. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bahan. Um, Mr. Salmuth? Uh, thank you to Mr. Hurd for uh, seizing the initiative and for your work and uh, happy to support this. Thank you. Yes, and yeah, Mr. Hurd. And I was just gonna say, another reason to not do the 24th is I didn't want to take the thunder away from your birthday, Mr. Helmer. <laughs> Very kind of you, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> well, well, what would be better than having town day on your birthday? I mean, I, think I, I can cool. think of some things that would be better than that. <laughs> oh, man, I mean, well, not this town day. I mean, this town day is gonna be something else, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you will want to see it for we don't know what that something else is going to be but it's going to be worth seeing <laughs> so so uh so yeah I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to it but uh uh it's going to be it is going to be something else even <laughs> so mr hurt and i uh we'll, we'll figure it out and and, and uh yeah uh, let's see what world we're in i mean come the in the September, man, I mean, things just have a way of changing almost like every 30 days here in a different world. Uh, so, so, um, so I, um, yeah, I'll be happy to, to um, support this. I mean, so on a motion to have town day on September 17th by 
Mr. Hurd and seconded by Ms. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Helmut? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? I mean, Jesus, Mr. Diggins. Sorry. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> so, so, so now, now I'm wiser. Sorry about that. So, 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 yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Ages. So, uh, so I think uh, we're we're moving on to item number seven: correspondence received, uh, and that would be a petition. The petition signatures in support of the Mass Ave Vision Zero campaign in Arlington. It was a uh, um, letter submitted by. Um, Phil Goff, Ms. Goff, and Mr. Gibson, the co-chairs of Everywhere Arlington Liberal Streets Coalition. And so um, I will recommend that that be taken up by the um, town manager, and I would like to work with him in consulting with the um, petitioners Mina, and anyone else that is interested in this issue, the issues that are raised. Over, refer this to the town manager. Second that. Thank you. And so um, I don't need to take a vote on this, right? I do. I do. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so I was moved by by Mr. Hurd and seconded by by Mr. Helmut. Now, yeah, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Helmut. Yes. Mrs. Mahon. Yeah. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, so um, I think this is going to be it for the meeting because I didn't put new business on the agenda. I mean, can we can we do that anyways, Mr. Mr. Heim? Yes, as long as there's not a deliberation taking place okay, on great. the business side. All right. So so great. So um so then um let's start with um Mr. Helmut. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No new business. Um Mr. Hurd? No new business. Mrs. Mahan? Um, yes, very briefly, and it'll save myself a call to the manager. Um, could I, through you, Mr. Chair, um, or make the request to you to oversee if uh, the town manager, I think at the last meeting or the meeting before that under new business, um, spoke briefly about um, Congresswoman Clark's visit to, I guess, to Arlington, um, as well as the designation of some federal opera funds. And I believe he stated that um, the town of Arlington would sort of be the overseer or auditor of those funds. So my request would be if, if uh, the board could be provided with a couple of paragraphs of exactly um, all the information we need to know, because um, I do see that one of our colleagues from Lexington um, has submitted a request um, on behalf of um, I believe it might, but it might not apply to the money that the Congresswoman has um, gotten for federal opera funding um, for their leaf blowing. Um, or that, may, that may be something separate. So I'd like an explanation so that we all know what these funds are. I just want to register that um, I think it was a major oversight. I, I had spoken with the Congresswoman's office that um, I did let them know the board was not aware um, that uh, Congresswoman Clark was coming to Arlington. Um, so it wasn't a select board sort of snub. And I'd like to make sure that that doesn't happen in the future. And um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. And um, so um, potential new business I mean, is that we, I know that the previous chair had brought up that we might look at um, some articles I mean, that uh, the redevelopment board wanted us to chime in on. I mean, and so um, that wasn't on today's agenda, but uh, I am considering putting that on the agenda for, for the 20th. And then we will make, uh, uh, it won't be in our report, I mean, but we will somehow communicate in what we determine in, uh, at that meeting to town meeting. So uh, that's it at this point. I see Mr. Heim nodding his head approvingly, approving. So, okay. And uh, so, um, um, yeah, um, Mr. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at the chair's discretion, uh, oftentimes when new business, we uh, invite the town manager if he hasn't, uh, has any new business to offer. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Helmuth. Mr. 
Yeah, th thank you for that, Mr. Helmuth. Um, no, I, I don't have any new business tonight, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, so uh, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Okay, so I move. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Second. Mm -hmm. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Also, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yeah. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Take care.